Hello everyone! In this video, I'll take you with me in the creation of this color theory study. One of my goals as an artist is to be able to learn more about color theory and mixing. And this year, I intend to make some progress in that area. I don't intend for this video to be strictly educational, because I don't think I'm fully educated on this matter, but I'll share some basic knowledge with you as I go along. If you'd like to delve deeper into color theory, I'd recommend Dr. Otto Kano's playlist with all sorts of information on the subject. She explains things much more in depth, and of course she tackles much more information than me here in this video. I'll leave the link for that playlist in the description below. I sometimes talk about the new project I'm working on, the series Slumber, but I haven't been able to show you anything yet. One reason is because I'm still working on it and I want to show you things that are a bit more fleshed out, but another reason is because I need to create a good color palette for those paintings before actually starting them. So I decided to go through all I know about color theory so that I can decide on the color palette in a way that is mindful because I want the colors to have meaning but also keep some sort of consistency in the end. So I'm going to be creating a few studies of color mixes and also a final poster that I can keep for myself and refer to whenever I'm in a slump and need a bit of help when it comes to working with color. I am going to be using my Magello paints since it is a good way to get to know them better and understand the mixes I can achieve with them. If you ever want to experiment with paints and learn more about pigments, creating these types of color mixing studies can really help you out with that. Also, I'm going to be trying out for the first time these new travel brushes by Fumui. They came in this letter pouch and they are genuine squirrel hair. According to their website, they are really good for watercolors as they hold water really well. The brushes are number 4, number 8 and number 12 with a very good weight and I really loved their look as well with the gold accent and the darker wood. To put it simply, the perception of color is going to be different for everyone, because we all have different ways to interpret what we see. This is important to note, in case you don't agree with how I or anyone else perceives and interprets colors. One of the things I want to tackle is color temperature. Color temperature is also very relative to the environment the color is in, what you want to portray, and also the person seeing it. In general, we associate reds and yellows to warm colors and blues and greens to cold colors. In a very general sense, this is true. But this also has been changing throughout the ages because people will always see colors differently. I am creating two different color wheels that represent both cool and warm colors, and you will see a difference in the colors mixed. In both wheels, you can achieve the secondary colors. The main difference lies in their vibrancy. While in the warm color wheel, the oranges are very bright, in the cool color wheel, the greens are the ones with more vibrancy. Funnily enough though, in both, the purples have a tendency to either be muddy or too dark. So if we want to mix a very bright orange that stands out in tone, we have to use very warm tones of yellow and red. The same way, we have to use cool blues and yellows to mix the best tone of vibrant green. Now this isn't true with purples, however. To be able to mix a good vibrant purple, you would instead need a warm and a cool color to achieve it. I tested with several different tones of warm and cool reds and blues to be able to achieve the best tone of purple. And as you can see, 
these two were the best option. After having this information in mind, I started to build the best representation of the color wheel with both warm and cool primaries. This works for me, but it could be very different for you, so take my opinion with a grain of salt. What this final study looks like is very simple. Instead of having either warm or cool colors, I will be having both, which we could call the split primary color wheel. By having a cool and warm version of each primary color, you are basically allowing your color wheel to explore the best and most vibrant mixes of the secondary colors. These colors could also be the best option if you don't know where to start with a new paint medium and want to buy new paints. Instead of having a huge variety of paints, you would have only six, a cool and a warm version of the primary colors, with which you can learn basic color mixing. After these studies, I decided that I wanted this information on the final poster. Another thing that was very important for me to have in the final poster and one that I used to struggle with is complementary and analogous colors. Complementary colors are essentially two colors that are opposite to each other on the wheel. For example, red is fully opposite to green, therefore they complement each other. Another way you can identify them is by understanding that when you pick a primary color, its complementary will be a mix of the other two primaries. Take the color blue as example. The complementary color for blue is orange, which is a mix of both red and yellow. That could be an easy way to identify them at first sight, but it's not always this linear, of course. Analogous colors, however, are easier to identify. These are colors that are directly beside each other on the wheel. If I decide to make a painting in red, orange and yellow, I'm using an analogous palette because these colors are right beside each other on the wheel. Because I use a lot of complementary and analogous palettes, I'd like to have this information on the poster as well. The last bit of information I'm studying is both saturation and value. These two differ greatly, and I still sometimes struggle with separating the two. In a basic explanation, saturation is the intensity of a color, or chroma. Opposite to this, value is the lightness and darkness of a color, and every color has both value and saturation. For saturation, the more pure a color is, the more saturated. You can desaturate a color by using another one to neutralize it, like a complementary color, for example. 
If we want to neutralize a bright orange, we could use a bit of blue, and it will instantly be less saturated. Now, this can be different from medium to medium. I am using watercolors, so have this in mind, but this can be still applied to any medium you wish to use. Color theory can be very helpful when learning to mix paint, but also just to understand your own color palette, whatever the medium is. When it comes to value, though, this can be a bit simpler if you are using watercolors like me. If you were using gouache, acrylics, or oils, it's safe to say you could use a bit of either white or black, maybe even burnt umber, to make a color lighter or darker. This doesn't particularly apply to watercolors though, because of their nature. When we need to make a color lighter, we simply use more water. By increasing the water to paint ratio, the pigment dilutes even more, making the color much lighter than it was. For darker values though, you can still use something like burnt umber to darken the color, much like other mediums. Value can be the most important thing when creating compositions and depicting three-dimensional objects, no matter the medium or subject. Now that I have the basic information that I'd like to note in the final sheet, I'm going to start laying out where each information will be going. Talking about the brushes for a little bit, I'd like to say I was very impressed with their performance. They do hold water very well and slide smoothly on the paper while painting. I was a bit on the fence about their weight, thinking they could be heavy on the hand while working, but it actually helped keeping the brush steady on my grip. I also really like the leather pouch they came in, it makes these brushes a great asset when traveling. Their price point is also relatively low for their good quality and craftsmanship. Also, these brushes were bought out of my own money. I'm just sharing with you a good purchase I recently did. On another note, I would like to thank everyone that has been subscribing these past few weeks. We have now reached the 1000 milestone and I am so happy to have you here on my channel. Thank you guys so much for coming along with me on this art journey and I hope you enjoy it as much as I've been loving creating these videos for you.
Anyway, I am going to frame this poster and keep it around for future references, because now I feel confident in creating a good palette for upcoming projects. These color studies pages were a good way to break into a new sketchbook. As you may remember, this one is the one I got from the giveaway by Bitter Melon Bindery. I did a wash painting on the first page of it last year, but I've only just finished my other sketchbook, so this is my current one. I hope this video can be helpful in some way, and I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching. If you'd like to add something to what I said or even correct me in anything, don't forget to say it in the comments down below. Just remember to be kind with your words. So thank you so much for being here. Leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the lazyartist13. And I'll see you soon. Take care.